All right, uh, last time we left off talking about uh, query logs and how we can turn clicks into preferences. So uh, we said that if a search engine gives us a ranking and the user clicks on the third document, that produces a set of preferences. The user prefers document three to documents one and two, pre also prefers it to document four and all the subsequent uh, documents. And uh, what you want to do with preferences is either convert them to something that looks like relevance judgments or build evaluation metrics directly off of preferences. So for converting them to, real, to relevance judgments, uh, we talked about click deviation, right? So you take the rate at which the document is clicked on uh, at position, at rank P for a given query, uh, versus the average click rate for position P for that query. And the deviation between that correlates with how relevant the document is um, to the query. So that's how, you would, uh, that's how you would convert clicks into something that looks a bit like relevance. Uh, what you can also do is you can take uh, the preferences that are generated by a click and build an evaluation metric directly from those preferences. So uh, Kendall Tau is one example uh, of, uh, of building a metric like that. So let's just look at how it works. So suppose you have your ranking again, and the user clicks on the third document. So <clears throat> from that click, we get the following set of preferences. We know that D3 was preferred to all the documents in that ranking, right? The user picked D3 out of everything, so we get these preferences. Um, now, if you think about the preferences that the system has come up with, right? The system has generated a ranking. So the system implicitly has its own set of preferences. The system puts D1 at the top. This means that it prefers D1 to D2, D3, D4, right? It also prefers D2 to D3 and D4. So uh, this is a set of preferences that the system implicitly has uh, when it was producing the ranking, right? So D1 was preferred to D2, D3, D4. D2 was preferred to D3 and D4. And D3 was preferred to D4. Now, so this is a set of preferences that the system has implicitly. This is a set of preferences that is implied by the user's click. What you can look at is you can look at the overlap and the differences between the two set of preferences. So uh, D3 and D4, they are concordant. So this means that D3 was preferred to D4 by the user. It was also preferred by the system. So that pair is the same in both sets of preferences. Uh, but these two pairs are different, right? So the system thought that D1 was better than D3, and the user actually thinks otherwise. The user thinks that D3 is better than D1, right? So this is a discordant pair. This is a pair where the system thinks one thing and the user thinks another thing. So the candle tau metric is based on counting the number of concordant agreeing pairs, so these are the green ones, and discordant pairs, the red ones, where the system and the user uh, disagree. And then the metric is just defined as, uh, so P is the agreeing pairs, Q is the disagreeing pairs, so it's P minus Q over P plus Q. Uh, and that gives you a candle, uh, that, that, that gives you a number, which is called candle tau. Uh, <coughs> And the higher that number is, the greater the agreement between the user and the system for this particular ranking and for this particular click that the user is generating. Note that what I'm doing is I'm ignoring the gray pairs. So these are the pairs uh, which um, I guess you could say they were sort of implied uh, in the, uh, by the user as well. So whether D1 is preferred to D2 or not, we don't actually know. Right. So when the user clicks on D3, that doesn't really give us any information about his preferences for uh, D1 and D2. You only know about things that involve uh, D3. So, um, so you can actually treat those in various ways. But in, in, in this example, I'm, I'm throwing them away because I'm assuming that this set of preferences doesn't, can, doesn't tell us anything about D1 and D2. So you can't say if it's concordant or discordant. If you didn't throw it away, it would be a concordant pair because you would assume that D1 is preferred to D2. But uh, it's, uh, it's actually not. Uh, so uh, 
I'm, I'm not counting the pairs for which you cannot make a judgment here. Right? So if you did that, uh, if you counted the, P and the, uh, the P and the Q this way, you'd get a Kendall tau of minus 0.33, right? And, and the higher the, the tau, the, the more agreement uh, there is. <clears throat> so, uh, so it's a metric. Uh, you can use it if you don't have relevance judgments, if you just have clicks. Um, now, one interesting question about this metric. Uh, remember when we talked about mean average precision and we talked about NDCG, right? So for, uh, that was a couple of slides back. So for, yeah, right there, okay? So we said that for NDCG, you have to, comp you have to stop computing it at a certain point in the ranking. You cannot, this sum has to stop at K, where K is some predetermined number, like 20 or 50. Right. Um, whereas for mean average precision, you can compute it over the entire ranking, even if that ranking has millions of items, because the utility function uh, degenerates really, really quickly. Right. So MAP is a metric that you don't have to stop at a certain rank, and MDCG you do have to stop. So uh, what about Kendall Tau? Is that a metric that you have to stop at a certain point in the ranking? Yes. Yes. Why? Right. That's right, exactly. So the answer is, uh, yes, you do have to stop. And the reason is, if I don't stop, then the rest of the ranks are guaranteed to be concordant. right? Whatever the user clicked on, everything below that will have the same set of preferences for the user's click as for the system. So your P will be inflated to a ridiculously high number artificially. So, uh, so when you're computing Kendall's tau, you do have to chop uh, at, a certain, at a certain rank. Uh, so uh, there's another metric which, um, which, looks at, uh, which looks at preferences. It call, it's called BPREF, and that's just a variation of Kendall's tau. I'm not actually going to go over that um, uh, this time. 